Moving on to section three, we're gonna talk about the classification of matter. Again, this is something you've probably done uh, before. So matter is defined that anything that has mass and occupies space. So it has mass and it takes up space. So it has mass and volume. Things that are made of matter. Hmm. This is always interesting. Well, how about, see so if you can go over some examples. Uh, this chair that I'm sitting in. Um, your pet dog or cat. Um, I'm fixing to go eat lunch, so how about some spaghetti? So food. Um, and then something you might not think about, like the air we breathe. Air is actually considered matter. Now let's contrast that with things that are not matter. This is not quite as intuitive as you might think. You're, well, everything is matter. That's not quite true. So light is not matter. Heat is not matter. How about kinetic energy? That's energy of motion. That's not matter. Um, neither is potential energy, so energy in any sort. Um, sounds that you, that, so sound, music, um, things on the radio, um, light, you're going to need a light, so like if you have a rainbow, like a prism, colors. So we say colors are not matter. Not talking about crayons, crayons are matter, but the color blue is not. And then gravity, gravity is also not matter. So we are exposed to things that are matter and not matter. So there are three states. Everyone probably knows this. There's solid, liquid, and gas. All right. If somebody wants to talk about plasma, well, it's a little bit different. Now, let's talk about these and how particles are arranged and such. So we'll talk, we'll start at the top. Let's talk about solids. So for volume, this has to do with takes up space. All right, so solids have a definite volume. You can measure it easily. Solids also have a definite shape. So you can look at it and you can say, well, it's a cube, it's a sphere, or it's an irregular shape, you know, if you have like a lump of coal. You, it, it definitely has a shape, even if we don't define it geometrically. Particles are arranged very close together. So here we're going to say that there are strong attractive forces. So the particles are arranged close. So they're arranged very close. Now, particles, matter is always moving in some form. Now in a solid, like this table here, the solid isn't really moving. You know, the table isn't moving unless I move it. Well, but within the table, the particles of the table are actually moving. They're going to vibrate in place. So think of this. How many of you are sitting here right now watching this video and you have either one leg crossed over the other or not and you're shaking one of your feet? That's what a solid does. So you just kind of sit there and you vibrate in place. You got a little bit of nervous energy maybe. Um, that's the best kind of analogy that I, that I have for you there. Now a liquid. A liquid definitely has a volume. So it's a definite volume. We can measure a liquid. And you'll do that in lab. 
Now, does a liquid have a shape? It's kind of weird, right? So liquids, it's not definite. You can't just look at a liquid and go, oh, it's a cube. Well, but if I told you it had, like you had a cup of water versus um, a pan of water, those are gonna be different shapes, right? But it's still water. So what happens with liquid is it's going to take the shape of its container. So take the shape of its container. Within a liquid, the particles, they're touching each other. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna slide past each other. So think about that like um, a river. So you think like li liquids flow. Uh, some flow faster than others, but liquids flow. So they're just kind of sliding past each other as they're moving along. Now, how are particles in a liquid moving? Well, let's think about it. They're sliding past each other. So they're probably gonna be moving kind of fast, moderately fast. And again, all this is relative. Now, liquids don't have a definite shape, but they take the shape of the container. How do they take the shape of the container? Well, they're all moving in random directions. So they're moving moderately fast in a random direction. Now, what ends up happening is the water reaches the side of the container and it can't go anywhere else. So the container stops it. So it just bounces off and tries to move somewhere else. Now, gases. Their volume is not definite. Think about the atmosphere here. Their shape is also not definite. So it's also going to take the shape of the container. Now, why is the volume not definite? This is where you get into pressure. So, you know, you can have this much air between my hands. Well, I know it's not a container, but well, I can take the same amount of air and push it here. So it doesn't have a definite volume. So you have to deal with pressure. Pressure affects volume. We'll talk about that later. How are particles arranged in a gas? They're arranged very randomly. And relatively, they are far apart. So particles in a gas are far apart. And they are moving super fast. So very rapid. They're just pinging all over the place. Now, what happens, can you have, so we had, um, we can have not definite volume and not definite shapes. Is it possible to have a not definite volume and a definite shape? The answer is no, that is not possible. Seems like it might be a good question. So, not possible. There. So make sure you know the differences between the particles and how they're moving and what that overall effect is.